Robotic transplant is being performed in a few centers across the world. Initially, robotic transplant was being performed only in patients with less risk and single renal vessels. High risk patients and multiple renal vessels were considered as relative contraindications for robotic assisted kidney transplant. Our first case is trousering of equal size double renal vessels. This was accomplished in the bench using a 7-0 polypropylene as shown in the video. This avoided increased warm ischemia associated with robotic assisted kidney transplantation. This allows us to perform anastomosis on single large vessels with limited ischemia time. This is probably the technique which is advisable early in the learning curve. Here, a 6 ergoretic suture is used and the posterior wall is sutured first and after that, the anterior wall is sutured. After this, the clamps are released and the anastomosis is checked for hemostasis. Our second case is that of unequal sized renal vessels and here, the smaller vessel is piggybacked on the main renal vessel using a 7-0 or 8-0 proline suture. This circumvented the problem of handling small renal vessels in robotics. This case also posed another challenge as the patient had diabetic nephropathy and atherosclerosis of the external iliac vessels. So once the arteriotomy was made, the atherosclerotic plaque was fixed with inside out stitches to prevent intimal dissection after the anastomosis was made. This can be achieved using a 7-0 carotic suture. After this, the anastomosis was completed in the usual fashion. In such low quality vessels, care has to be taken to take the stitches inside out to fix the plaque from the internal iliac vessel towards the renal vessel. Once the clamps are released, we can appreciate that both the small and the main renal artery are getting full. Our next case is the double barrel anastomosis of two equal sized renal vessels to the external iliac artery. This is a case of a 14 year old girl who had Bart Beadle syndrome with associated obesity. In this patient, a twin arteriotomy was done and spaced so as to minimize the arteriotomy size. The carotid suture with its intrinsic property of less memory, good tensile strength and being multifilament suture offers good hemostatic property. And it is considered an ideal suture material for the minimal invasive vascular surgeon. Double barreling of the renal vessels should be considered later in the learning curve of the robotic surgeon to reduce the ischemic times. Initially, the lower polar artery is anastomosed to the external iliac artery in an end to side fashion. We use a 7-0 coretic suture on a 9mm needle which would be an ideal suture material for renal vessels which are of adequate size. After anastomosis of the lower vessel, the cranial artery is anastomosed to the external iliac artery in a similar fashion. In cases with longer operative times, the application of ice can be considered after anastomosis of each renal artery to the external iliac vessel. This is how a completed double barrel anastomosis of the renal vessels to the external iliac artery should look like. The clamps are removed and the anastomosis is checked for hemostasis. This procedure should be done later in the learning curve of the robotic surgeon 
as this consumes more anastomotic time. You can see the post-operative picture of the patient on the screen. Our next case is the anastomosis to the inferior epigastric artery. This again is a case where anastomosis is done between two unequal sized vessels. Whenever the anastomosis is planned to the inferior epigastric artery, the vessel is first dissected and prepared. Once the graft is placed, an end to side anastomosis of the renal vessels and external iliac artery and vein is performed. The clamps are released after that and the kidney is flipped back into the right iliac fossa. This is followed by the anastomosis of the inferior epigastric artery to the accessory renal artery with the clamps off. A 7O or A2 gortex would be the best suture material for this purpose. This technique can be performed earlier in the learning curve of the robotic surgeon because the anastomosis to the inferior epigastric artery is done off clamp thereby limiting the warm ischemia time. The fine nature of the inferior epigastric vessel warrants good robotic surgical suturing skills which can be achieved by practicing on inanimate objects. Our fifth challenging case is that of a renal autotransplant using a right-sided kidney. This was a case of segmental uretric injury. In this instance, a laparoscopic nephrectomy was performed and a robotic autotransplant was subsequently done. A short renal vein on the right side presents a formidable challenge similar to that in the open cases. Historically, most of the conversions in robotic kidney transplant have happened while anastomosing the right renal vein. So care should be taken to select cases with good vein length to avoid technical difficulties and open conversions. In cases with thin renal veins, it might be prudent to use 7-0 cortex sutures. A total of 44 patients underwent kidney transplant in our study and the results are summarized in the video. Thank you.